Okay, hey students, um, got the results from the inventory of my traits that you guys filled out on the form. So far, only 37 of you have completed this. Uh, the th first person was me, because I tested it. Um, so 37 students have responded. <clears throat> Thank you so much for doing your work. Good job. I, what I did is I opened it in Excel, and I'm not going to show you guys that because it shows all the details of your name and email address and ID numbers and stuff like that so so instead what I'm going to do is <clears throat> show you just the results but I'm gonna get rid of your names so they just do student 1 through student 37 okay so I put these results into a spreadsheet and it says an inventory of my traits students 1 through 37 student numbers on the left and all your data is here so instead of giving you all this data, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to summarize this for you. I went through and I looked at uh, attached or unattached earlobes, and I just counted up all the attached and all the unattached earlobes. And um, your results for rolling tongue, all of the students who could, yes, roll their tongue or no, not roll their tongue. And dimples and freckles and curly hair and clasping hands and hairline and with whether or not you're left-handed or right-handed. So this is all the raw data and I'm going to summarize this data and show that to you next. Okay, so here are the results for all the students when I added up all the results. Um, earlobes, tongue rolling, dimples, freckles, curly hair, hand clasping, hairline, and handedness are all the different categories that we, that we did our inventory for. And what we're going to do is we're going to make a graph of this so that we can visualize the data that's here. As you can see, there's a bunch of numbers on this, but it's kind of difficult to visualize it, which is why graphing is so important for data, so that you can visualize it and see the differences between the categories. So what I have here is a piece of paper. I want everybody to get out a piece of paper right now. It doesn't matter if it's blank paper or lined paper. Um, but what you're going to do is you're going to draw a graph. I'm going to start you out and then you're going to finish it. You're going to draw a graph of these data. Then at the end, you're going to take a picture and then submit that to show me that you did your work. If you don't have paper, then you could do this on your iPad. It might be a little bit more difficult. Some of you might want to use KidZone, but I haven't taught all my classes how to do that yet. So if you know how to use KidZone, you might be able to use that to make your graph. But whatever method you use, if you want to do it on paper or on your iPad, uh, as long as you graph the results, that's what we're practicing. Okay? Well, let's do the, the axes first. Let's do the x-axis along the bottom like this, and then the y-axis that goes up top like this. So x and y to the sky. Y-axis. Okay? Title goes on top. So a, you guys can write this too, a class inventory of traits. A class inventory of traits. Okay, so now it's not just your results anymore, it's the whole class, and be sure to underline your title class inventory of traits and this isn't going to be just your class this is actually all the all the sixth grade science classes um, and since only 37 of you have submitted your results um, uh, that means a lot of more people need to finish but this is going to be a graph of the students that have done it so far okay so a class inventory of traits and what we are going to do is um, we're going to remember that this is the x-axis, so let's label this x-axis, and this one is the y-axis, so y-axis goes here. We are going to number the students on the left side, so we're going to label the left side of the graph students. So let's label that. On the left side, label students because that's the number that's increasing based on each characteristic. Students. And we know that it's going to be a certain number of students because there's a total of 37. 
for all the categories. So the maximum is going to be 37. So we have to think about what the increments are going to be. Let's do the top about 40, okay? Obviously we're not going to have that many because we only have 37. But if we measure about halfway, that's going to be about 20 because half of 40 is 20. And then half of that is 10. And in between 40 and 20 is 30. And then let's do set, um, let's do increments of 5. So 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. If we were doing on this on graph paper, it would be much easier because of the fact that um, we would ha have lines already. But if you're using blank paper, then just do your best. All right, now this is the number of students for each category. The categories are going to go on the bottom. Okay, so let's write this down here. Trait categories. So let's mark this. Trait categories it goes on the bottom. This is the label for the x-axis. Okay, so trait categories goes down here. And now what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to mark eight categories, just like the data. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide up this section here into eight parts. So I'm going to divide it up in the middle here. Um, and then, so from here to here, there's going to be four. And then here to here, there's going to be four. So I'm going to divide this up here, here in half, and then here. Okay. So one, two, three, four. So I'm going to divide that in half again to make eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. All right. So we have eight sections here for categories for um, these traits. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do them in order for what we listed, what we have listed in the data. So the first one is the earlobes. The two categories for earlobes, attached or unattached. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide this into like two sections here. So like right here and here is going to be Attached earlobes, attached earlobes, and unattached earlobes. And then right here we could put ears. And then I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a circle around it just so that I know that that is the category. So this is the category for it's either attached or unattached. Okay. And I am realizing now that I'm probably going to have to erase this and move it down. So I that would be a good example of learning from your mistakes. Okay, so I'm going to move it down to the edge of the paper. If you need to get a new piece of paper out, you can do that or you can just erase. Okay, so that's the first category, earlobes. Uh, and then the next category, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention to you that I am doing a bar graph, okay? the number of attached earlobes are going to go up to a certain number of students and the number of unattached earlobes is going to be so we'll see the comparison. Um, I'm going to do one more category which is tongue rolling. So tongue rolling, i put a little arrow here and a little arrow here. You can design it a little differently if you want based on how you like to make graphs but it needs to convey the information properly, okay? Um, so for tongue, no, I can't roll my tongue or yes I can roll my tongue. I'm going to put tongue, tongue rolling and I'm going to circle that. Okay so we got two categories here. Earlobes attached or unattached or tongue rolling no or yes. And then I'm going to expect you guys to use the data table to fill in the rest of these. Okay so this one's going to be dimples this one's going to be freckles, this one's going to be curly hair, this one is hand clasping, and this one is hairline, either yes or no, I have a widow's peak. And then this one is going to be handedness, so you're going to either write left-handed or right-handed or ambidextrous. And three of you actually indicated that you're ambidextrous. Ambidextrous means that you can use your left hand to write or you can use your right hand to write. And I kind of find that hard to believe. I don't think that 
ambidextrous is that common, but I could be wrong. Maybe you guys are um, amazing with your writing abilities with both left and right hand. But other than that, the left-handed versus right-handed seems pretty normal because of the fact that there are usually more people who write with their right hand than with their left hand. But for me, I'm left-handed. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to record the results here for earlobes and tongue rolling. Okay, so what I do is I look at the data table again, and I see that earlobes, let's just look at earlobes, nine people have indicated that they have attached earlobes. So I'm going to go up here for attached, and I'm going to mark here right under 10, that's going to be nine. So I'm going to put a bar right here, for right under there is nine, okay? So boom, boom, right there. Nine people, and I'm going to put it like a nine right here, just so I know exactly what the number is. If you guys want to get colored pencils out or markers, you can do that to make it look um, nicer to have different uh, colors for each. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do different patterns here. For this one, I'm going to do diagonal lines and unattached earlobes is 28. 28 students have unattached earlobes. So I'm going to go all the way up here, 28 students. It's going to be below 30, right about here. So this is going to be 28. 28 students have unattached earlobes. So I'm going to bring down that bar for the graph. And I'm going to put them side by side so you can compare the two. Attached, 9. Unattached is 28. I'm going to do the same design for this one. The same pattern just to show that they go together. And then I'm going to do a different pattern for tongue rolling. So as you can see, a lot more students have unattached uh, earlobes rather than attached earlobes. So that's pretty interesting to realize that um, there's a big difference. All right, let's do tongue rolling next. So for tongue rolling, uh, according to the data, it says that 10 students cannot roll their tongue. So let's indicate that on here. So we have 10 right here for the y-axis. 10 students, no, I can't. So 10 students cannot roll their tongue. So I'm gonna mark that with the bar here. And I'm gonna do a different design. I'm just gonna do little circles here. For yes, I can, students who can roll their tongue, 27. So 27 is up here. 27 is a little bit below 28, so right about here. Students who can roll their tongue goes here. 27 and 10. All right, I'm gonna fill in the design here for the pattern. Okay, so there you have it. Um, where do you fall? Were you one of those who, yes, you could roll your tongue or no, you couldn't? So pretty interesting to see. As you go along, as you fill out the rest of this graph, I want you guys to think about where are you in comparison with the rest of the class? Um, are you in the group with the majority or are you in the minority group that has fewer of that trait? Where do you fall in each category? Okay, there's going to be some that are really similar like 50-50 almost and some that are much different like tongue rolling and ears. There, there's quite a big difference between those who can and those who can't or have attached earlobes and are unattached earlobes. And the interesting thing is that none of these really are in your control. Like most of these, you're just born with, and um, you know, there's no right or wrong. There's no good or bad between one or the other. It's just the way you are, right? That's genetics. Is just what the way that you were um, formed based on what your DNA tells you. So go ahead and finish that. Um, once you are done, make sure you take a picture or take a screenshot if you did it on your iPad, and and I am very interested to see your graphs and see. Uh, what you drew and what you created and hopefully you can learn a little bit more about your class your peers and, and what traits they have and how you compare to them so go ahead and do that and um, I look forward to seeing them
the only other additional thing that I want to mention is over here when you get to handedness there's going to be left handed right handed or ambidextrous uh, for the three different parts to that category okay so again let me know if you have any questions um, and I'd be happy to help you